To me, Sheryl Sandberg's book is not about everyone striving to get into the C-suite, although for some, that's certainly a great goal. And for us non-millennials listening in, we were surprised by what we heard. These smart and curious young women don't necessarily aspire to follow our path, and they don't aspire to lead an organization. To better understand these millennials for ourselves and for many of our clients who are trying as well to get into their heads and hearts. When the results came in, again, we were surprised. 80% of millennial women agree that in order to be in a leadership role, women must make sacrifices related to raising a family. When I look back at my own successes and those of other people I know, it Yes, hard work was part of the equation, but it really came down to going big or going home. You cannot do just what you're told to do. You have to go to the max, go to the burn, push it, come up with bold, innovative ideas and solutions that no one has asked you to do in your job. And you've got to make your bosses and your clients say, wow. And if you don't go big, you're not only going to get the success you want, but you're not going to be able to sustain it. Now, I know it can, it can be scary to do that. And for me, all through my 20s, I think I really held back from the notion of going big. It would be interesting to hear from our millennial women on the panel uh, if they could share their own feelings and those of their peers about career goals. I, maybe I'm one of the outliers, but I actually, um you know, would love to, to have a top job one day. Uh, so if you hear of any opportunities, let me know. Um, uh, I, I think I'm wise enough to know that I'm not ready for it yet, um, but I hope to someday be ready for it and have that challenge. Um, I would say that among my friends, that's probably true, that statistic that you found. Because I don't hear, I hear some of it, but not a lot of aspiring to the top leadership job. What I hear most is, I want to find a steady job that pays well and makes me happy. And I think that's what a lot of um, people, but also women in, in their 20s, are struggling with. I mean, not only in these economic times, but also it is very important to this generation to do something that they enjoy and to not think of work as drudgery. So, you know, I don't know if they're thinking about climbing the ladder so much as they're thinking about finding something that has meaning to them. The economy is much different. Technology is everywhere. You can get ideas, inspiration, you're constantly connected. Um, we're more in a creativity economy where you're watching Silicon Valley, big ideas, and you're watching small, you know, entrepreneur. You're watching a lot of people yearn to do a startup. And, and it feels like ideas have become more important. Um, it sounds like exploration has become more important. And so, you know, we have a full team on our sales and marketing staff and even a lot of the editorial teams, when they have these people, give them projects they would love to do, enable them to have time in their schedules to be able to explore different things. I'm telling you, everybody on my team who's a millennial, they've got something else going on. They're not eating, sleep, and breathing fast company. And that's okay because you know what? It makes them more creative and happy employees. And I hate the word employee, but because we're like more team and family kind of oriented. Um, but they're judging themselves differently. And I feel like the focus is not so much on money. It's on what ideas have I hatched? How fun is it to collaborate with teams? How have I collaborated? How have I um, contributed to the overall thing going on that is this thing, at least in our company, called Fast Company? Don't get me wrong. They're asking me for raises all the time. <laughs> but, and, and they should get them, and they deserve them. But at the same time, um, you know, they, there's a lot of believing in this collaborative environment. I do think it's important to have that balance whether we say it or not, it is for me. It's not a it, it is for me. It is about you know being able to also demonstrate that you can be successful and still take care of your family. Because at the end of the day, I tell people all the time, my God-given job is my son. So that is extremely important to me. But 
being a woman and being fulfilled by what I do and what I'm able to contribute is also very important to me. And I don't want to make any sacrifices when it comes to that. I mean, we just had the whole Paul Tudor Jones situation where for those who might have missed it, he basically said women can't be good traders because as soon as a baby touches their breast, um, they lose any ability to have good ideas. And the fact that that can be said in a public forum oh is so outrageous and, and shows that there's so, he thinks that and his organization has therefore existed that way. And I do think as women, whether you're young women, whether you're older women, we have got to scratch like cats. Any time that there is something that's said against us, because we're the ones who are really going to bring all of us up. And that's something that I've been really, really passionate about my whole career. And I've been lucky enough to have a platform being a recognizable woman on Wall Street. And I, I just, you know, we're all sisters in this. Um, and, and I think the cat analogy is a great one. Just get our claws out. <laughs> um, and, and just don't, don't let other people, other people put us down, essentially. I think it was Elizabeth Lesser, Lesser, and she talked about this idea of, you know, you say, hi, how are you doing? And everyone says, good, how are you? And it's actually one of the most dangerous things you yeah. can do. And I think that's, I operated that way for so long, where it was, you know, this facade of perfection, everything is always great. And my entire life, I, I said, I'm just going to try it once. I'm just going to experiment and say, I don't think I'm doing well, or I kind of feel like, did, was that okay? Because I felt like an imposter there, or I don't think, you know, I look good today, or whatever it is. And the second I started dropping that with other women, I, I only do it with other women, I don't do it with men. So men will speak about a very different Kathleen. Um, but the second I started to do it, there was this whole camaraderie that started to happen within my own organization, or, you know, within the other women I worked with, or you know, within the clients that I had, or whatever else. And you know, of course, you've got to always strike that balance. But everything changed. Everything felt so much less heavy and overwhelming. Nothing was high stakes anymore. It was just, you know, this is me, and I, I'm going to be honest about it at all times. So. I'd encourage you know people to play around with that a little bit because it's it, it honestly changed my life. I think we all do just need to support each other whether we're at the beginning of our career or sort of more advanced in our career, helping each other, guiding each other. There are no right or wrongs. Nobody has the the magic bullet. But I think today opened up a really important is going to continue the dialogue that others have started about how to advance our careers and importantly, there's the jungle, you know, what ambition is, and there's no textbook answer. We all have the opportunity in the world in which we live today with technology and other things to chart our own course. And I think what's really important is finding something that you're really passionate about, that you believe in, and then doing it um, to the very best that you can. Yeah, I think there was a lot of connectivity. There was a lot of kind of pro women, like female, boosting up other women and supporting other women, um, <clears throat> which is really encouraging to see because you often hear about women knocking each other down. And I do feel like that's kind of ending and there's a lot of women who are making a stand against um, supporting one another. Uh, one of the things that I was really fascinated and excited about was the talk of uh, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurialism. I think uh, it seems that we've entered into sort of an entrepreneurial mindset for our careers, even if we're in the corporate world. Uh, so millennials are exploring and they're trying new things and they're not just sticking to a straight line. As someone said, it's sort of a squiggle today. And so I love that mindset and I love that it's not just in the entrepreneurial world but in the corporate world as well.